Guys, look at how big this Funkin' box is. And we are going to open it right now. Welcome to Teacup for One. My name is Matt and I have two degrees. And look at how big this Funkin' box is. I know I made that joke already, but look at it. Okay, a little bit of background on this big, beautiful box here. So, um, for my birthday, which was about a week and a half, two weeks ago, as of me recording this, I don't know when I'm gonna edit it and put it out into the world, but yeah, like two-ish weeks ago was my birthday. Happy birthday to me, woo! And my mom, being the amazing parent that she is, um, one who decided, you know what, why fight against Matt's compulsion to collect Funkos? I'm going to feed into it and, hey oh boy, did she ever with this epic, epic mystery box from none other than the legends themselves, K-Dog and Fish. That's right, friends. Today we are in for a treat because it is another K-Dog and Fish mystery box unboxing. And I think it's pretty clear. Ugh. There's a lot to unpack here, literally. Now, ugh, if you don't know K-Dog and Fish, first of all, what are you doing with yourselves as Funko Collectors? I'm assuming you're Funko Collectors if you're watching this. No, seriously, friends. K-Dong and Fish, they are my favorite Funko retailer. They're an independent Canadian company. They are the first, and I think maybe still to date, only Funko, like, dedicated store in all of Canada. They are amazing. All right, now, for a little bit of context here. In this giant box, which for the record, <laughs> was apparently so big that my mom's postal delivery person almost didn't drop it off because they were intimidated by the size of it. Like it was almost a pick up at the post office kind of situation, but they made it work because my mom's awesome. Now, in this box, there are three boxes. Today we're going to be opening up two of them. First, I'll show you the box that we're gonna open up in a future video. Yeah. There's probably a better way for me to do this, but I like to do things as uncomfortably as possible. Now, this box right here, this is a very special Funko Pop. This was actually not part of my mom's birthday present to me. I ordered this from K-Dog and Fish myself, and then just for convenience, <laughs> they shipped it all together, which actually accounts for why this box is so massive, and that was a birthday surprise in and of itself. But uh, suffice it to say, this right here, this is a pop that I've been wanting to add to my collection for a while. I'm so excited to finally have it, but we're not opening it today, so check out a future video for when we open this. But if you want to guess what it is, do that in the comments down below. But for now, I'm running out of places to put things. Ah, all right. Now, in this, okay, now, in this box, we have two other boxes that we're gonna to open today. Here they are, here's number one. Woo! Paper. And here's number two. Hold on, I can do this. There we go. Whew. Oh, and the birthday card I got with it. To Matthew. Happy <coughs> birthday. That's nice. All right. Um, this box has served its purpose. I'm going to find a place to put it. Okay. These are the boxes that we are going to be opening up today. And I say we, but obviously I've already opened them. I've already seen the amazing pops that are inside of them. But like I've done in some past K-Dog and Fish unboxing videos, even though I've opened the boxes already, I'm still going to give you the full unboxing experience. So I don't know which pop is in which box. We're gonna take them out one at a time, look at them and get really excited. Now, both of these are imperfection section mystery boxes, which have to be some of like the most creative mystery boxes and in some ways the most valuable and worthwhile mystery boxes that K-Dog and Fish offer. So imperfection section, that's the like chunk of the store, I'm assuming in the physical store, like the shelf that has pops with imperfect boxes. The pops themselves are in fantastic condition, but there might have been some box damage in transit when they were receiving the pops from their supplier. Um, I'm not sure what the backstory is behind the pops. The point is that they're not pops that are in a condition that they feel right selling at full price. So instead, you get an incredible deal on like top shelf pops just because the boxes might not be in the greatest condition. And I know that the boxes are a big deal to some pop collectors and absolutely fair. 
For me, I do like the boxes to be in good condition, but it's not a deal breaker because the heart of what I want is the pop itself. So for me, imperfection section boxes are an incredible deal, especially because I like to take pictures of my pops. And so these are, well, you'll see, it's a great way to get a variety of pops in a bunch of different lines, a bunch of different franchises. And I'm just, I'm so excited to share these with you. Okay, here we go. Um, just for the sake of space, I'm gonna move one of these boxes down here for now. So we are going to be looking at 12 pops total. Are you ready? I am. Let's go. All right, first, hold on. Now again, I wanna give you the full unboxing experience. So I'm not going to look at the pops. I'm gonna let you see them first. There we go. Is it upside down? <laughs> yes, okay. So this is Avengers Mecha Strike. Mech Strike? Tech Strike. Mech Strike, Captain Marvel. I don't really know anything about the Avengers or anything about Marvel outside of the MCU. I do know who Captain Marvel is. I love Captain Marvel as a character. I don't, I'm not familiar with what Avengers Mech Strike is, but the vibe that I'm getting looking at this is that it's like the Avengers meets the Transformers. And if that is not a mashup for the ages, I do not know what is. Captain Marvel has to have one of the coolest costumes in the entire Marvel Universe. This is awesome. And the box damage actually isn't even that bad. There's a little bit of a dent right here in the top corner, but like, I've done worse to my pops. I've received worse from other retailers for pops that I've paid full price for. So already, K-Dog and Fish, you know, you're living up to your own standards of excellence and I respect that. Okay, next. Whoop. What do we got here? Yes. So this is Vlad the Impaler from Bram Stoker's Dracula. Specifically, like the Bram Stoker's Dracula movie. That's the entire title of the movie, Bram Stoker's Dracula. It's the one either directed by Coppola or Scorsese. I think it's Coppola with Gary Oldman. Now, I haven't seen this specific film because vampires kind of scare me, but just the images that I've seen aesthetically it looks like that movie is amazing especially when it comes down to the costumes and i think that's the type of property that reflects beautifully when you're dealing with funko pops i find it really interesting that this is vlad the impaler and just like narratively that makes me wonder how they integrate the actual history of vlad the impaler with dracula like bram stoker's dracula it this pop is making me want to see the movie i'm pretty sure this is gary oldman he's wearing I believe it's armor, even though to me, in pop form, it kind of looks like an exposed muscle meat suit. And I know that's not the case. I looked up some images of this costume from the film, but there's just something kind of unsettling about the design of this red armor that he's wearing because it does summon those images of like exposed muscle. And I think that is so thematically perfect for everything that Vlad the Impaler is and everything that Dracula is. This is such a cool pop. I can't wait till Halloween comes around. The pictures will be amazing. And I don't actually know what the box damage would be considered on this box because it's in pretty pristine condition. So, amazing. All right, next, this one. Yes. Mrs. White from Clue. Now, I do already have this pop, and that is kind of the gamble that you take when you get a mystery box, but I absolutely love this figure. The entire Clue line is so exciting, uh, just in terms of nostalgia, but I think the character design on all of the Clue characters is impeccable. I love the fact that each one of them has one of the iconic Clue weapons, and this pop is no exception. Like Vlad the Impaler, I'm not actually sure what the imperfection is on this box. I guess there's like a little bit of a curvature on the front. I wouldn't even notice that otherwise. Awesome. Next. Oh, yes. Okay. This is a Star Wars character. One I have never heard of. It is Gar Saxon. I'm assuming that this character is from one of those animated series that I'm planning to watch but haven't gotten around to yet, like Clone Wars or Rebels. It's actually one of my goals or dreams for this year to watch my way through all of Star Wars from start to finish. Movies, TV shows, everything. We'll see if it actually transpires. And if it does, I'll know who this character is. But even though I don't know who he is, I just love the design on this pop. I think all of the armored Star Wars characters lend themselves to being pops brilliantly because there's just so much beautiful detail and design in the costumes and the outfits themselves. And like, it's just one of those things that I think meshes with the pop aesthetic fantastically. And again, I'm not seeing the imperfection here, K-Dog and Fish. Your standards are very high and that is why we love you. 
All right, next. <laughs> yes. I forgot about this guy. Cowboy McNugget. Oh, this might actually be my favorite pop in between the two boxes because I got most of the McDonald's collection for uh, for Christmas and I like I'm missing the McNugget collection. <laughs> And the cowboy has to be one of the funniest. And just everything. The hat, the mustache, just paired with my pure nostalgia for all these McDonald's characters. I love this guy so much. And once again, I don't see the imperfection K-Dog and Fish. Although maybe I'm just blinded to how bleepin' awesome the cowboy McNugget is. Alright, and the final pop from this mystery box. Young Gru from Minions. Now I'm going to admit I have never seen a Minions movie. I've never seen a Despicable Me movie. I know who this character is and I'm well I know who the Steve Carell character is like the old guy of whom the Minions are the Minions of. I'm assuming this is him when he's young because it says young Gru. I'm having this kind of sad realization looking at this pop that he's dressed almost identical to how I dress when I go out. Like he has the striped gray scarf he has the hair combed over to the side. He has the one sassy eyebrow. So even though I don't know who this character is from the film, in some ways it's kind of like looking at myself in a pop. All right, so there we go. Imperfection section mystery box number one. Let's move on to mystery box number two. I guess I'm just going to be like building myself a fortress of Funko Pops as we do this. Moving on. Next. Okay, this. This pop might be the ultimate grail of everything in between these two boxes. Now, I know I said that Cowboy McNugget might be my favorite figure between the two boxes. Ariel, this is just on another level. This is Ariel from the Ultimate Princess Collection. Now, the only reason I'm not as excited about this Ariel as I was about Cowboy McNugget is because I do already have this pop in my collection, but I am more than happy to welcome a second one. Because Ariel from the Ultimate Princess Collection, aside from being debatably the best pop in that entire set, is so difficult to get. Like, her value on the pop price guide the last time I checked was surprisingly high for a pop that is still actively in circulation. And just everything about the Ultimate Princess Collection, I adore. But especially just with this Ariel. Like the detail on the coral, the fact that you get Sebastian so it's two pops for the price of one, the flower in her hair, I am just, I am so in love with this figure and everything it represents. Now, there is a little bit of noticeable box damage here, but again, it's the imperfection section box. To be honest, I'm kind of disappointed when I'm opening an imperfection section box and then the pops don't have any discernible damage on them because I'm like, is it me? Am I the one who's missing something? So no, there is a bit of a tear right here on the top of the box and a little bit of a noticeable tear on the front. But if I wanted to display this in box, I still absolutely could. And I might actually, because the one that I have is currently on display out of box. And now I can display this one in box and just bask in the joy of how shiny the gold leaping is on it. I love this pop so much. Okay, next, this one. Okay, this is DMC from the Pop Rocks line. Now I'm gonna admit right now, I'm not a music mat. Like my thing is movies and theater and a very small selection of musicians, basically just Billy Joel. So any other musician, I'm not really gonna know who they are and I didn't know who DMC was. I did look it up and I'm thrilled to have the pop in my collection. But aside from the fact that I really don't have any context for who this is, the pop itself is awesome. I love the glasses, especially since they're a pair of tinted glasses, which I don't think I have anything sunglass-esque in my Funko Pop collection. So that's pretty exciting. And I, it's such a small detail, but I love it. The Adidas logo on his sneakers is so cool. Like it's the little touches like that that just really throw me about Funko Pops. Plus he's wearing an amazing hat. What's not to love? I'm Matt, I love hats. Okay, Run DMC. Next. Goldberg from the Mighty Ducks. The original Mighty Ducks. Not the Disney Plus series, which I actually haven't watched yet. I've heard mixed reviews 
Maybe I should watch it. Okay, anyway, it doesn't matter. Goldberg from the Mighty Ducks. Now, this is pretty darn exciting. Like, my absolute favorite thing about this pop is the Mighty Ducks logo on his jersey. Now, like I said, I'm not much of a music mat. I'm also not much of a sports mat. So growing up, the Mighty Ducks was the only sports team I kind of cared about. And the Toronto Maple Leafs, because, you know, Toronto. But Mighty Ducks... They were part of an entire Disney franchise. Like, it was bigger than just any one sports team. And the Mighty Ducks jersey is pretty iconic. It's a part of my childhood, so I just absolutely love that I have it on a Funko Pop. I mean, I always love when I have Pops that have a lot of complexity to either whatever they're wearing or to their setting. This is unlike any other Funko Pop that I have. Mostly because, like I said, I don't collect anything having to do with sports. So maybe there are other hockey players that are similar to this, but like... They wouldn't fit my collection. This absolutely does. The hockey gear is so detailed beyond belief, but really, like I said, this absolute star is that Mighty Duck logo on his jersey. And like most of the pops in this imperfection section box, I don't see the imperfection. Oh no, I do. There is the slightest of dents on the top of the box. Wouldn't have even noticed. Moving on. Next, this one. All right, Brett. Michaels. Now, like I said, I'm not a music mat, so I don't know who Brett Michaels is, but I can recognize and know a beautiful pop when I see one, and this is a beautiful pop. It's actually going back to what I was saying about the detail of the duck on the Mighty Ducks jersey. This has a lot of printed detail on it, which is something, come to think of it, that I don't think I see with a lot of the pops I generally collect. So when I do see it, it's pretty exciting. When I say printed detail, I just mean the detail on his bandana, plus the print on his shirt and the guitar. And actually, oh, I just realized his guitar has his autograph. And I'm almost positive that's going to be a print of Brett Michael's actual autograph. That's the kind of thing that I find really exciting about these figures. All right, next. Okay, we got two more. Classic Wonder Woman. It's Wonder Woman. Need I say more? Okay, I will. I love Wonder Woman. I don't really care about DC characters all that much. Like, I'm a casual Batman fan. Actually, wouldn't even say I'm a casual Batman fan. I haven't cared enough to go see Robert Pattinson donning the bat suit. But out of all the like DC films that have come out recently, the only one that I liked was the first Wonder Woman movie. That was an incredible movie. Now, I recognize that this is not the Gal Gadot Wonder Woman. I'm not even positive that it's the Linda Carter Wonder Woman. I think, just based on the fact that it's DC branded, it says Pop Heroes, I think this is the OG Wonder Woman from the comic books. And I love that. This is the classic outfit that's being emulated and reinterpreted every time we get a new reiteration of Wonder Woman. And, I don't know, there's just something really cool and special about having the original. And just looking at her stance, it could be that she's ready to fight, but there's also something that's evocative of the original Funko designs. Because back when Funko Pops were relatively new, pretty much all the Pops had this like fist clenched stance to them. And then they would just sort of swap out the outfits and the hair colors and say, oh, it's that character you know and love. Over the past five-ish years or so, Funko has started to really up the amount of detail. But there's something beautiful and classic about this figure that I find so exciting. Plus, she has that, that rope thing of truth attached to her belt, and I know that's a big deal when it comes to Wonder Woman, and I just, I love this. So, Wonder Woman. Wonderful. All right, and last, but certainly not least, oh yeah, yes. It's, it's Bill from Office Space, like, the most memeable character from that entire film. I, I have seen Office Space, but I only remember two things. I remember that Jennifer Aniston's character needs to have pieces of flair, and that inspired a movement on Facebook when Facebook was new 10 to 15-ish years ago. And we all want Facebook to bring back the pieces of flair button board, but we know it's not gonna happen. But aside from that, which is inconsequential, the other thing I remember, obviously, is this moment. That would be great. Okay. I love everything about this pop. First of all, 
the detail, which is something I've spoken to with some of the other figures, but everything from his glasses to the little logo on the coffee cup that he's holding to that logo again being on his, the card attached to his belt. There is so much going on with this pop in terms of visuals and in terms of aesthetics, but with me, and I've said this so many times on the channel, I love seeing how Funko emulates character energy just in the physical stances of the sculpts and this one absolutely takes the cake you could just look at how he's standing how he's holding the coffee mug how he has his hand on his waist and you just feel the cringy energy of that amazing hilarious moment like he has such a punchable face i want to punch this funko pop in the best way possible oh and again the box is in pretty perfect condition. There's a little bit of a tear at the bottom corner. Inconsequential. You know what? I'm actually probably not even going to display this one in the box because <laughs> I want to just have them on my desk looking at me while I'm at work all day. All right, friends. There you go. Two imperfection section boxes from K-Dog and Fish. Just look at the incredible variety of pops that we got in between these two boxes. When you're going into getting a mystery box, there's always that bit of a gamble because you don't know what you're going to get, especially when it has kind of a blanket theme like the imperfection section boxes. It's not like you're going in knowing, okay, I'm going to get a bunch of pops from like the Harry Potter franchise or the Star Wars franchise. This is kind of a free for all. And I love the balance that they gave for all kinds of different lines. We've got some comic books, we've got some music, movies, Disney, very important, obviously, some retro toys. I just think that there is something in both of these boxes for everyone. And for me and my purposes, since I do so much Funko Pop photography, sometimes I find that my collection can be a little bit limiting because I do really only have Disney figures and a couple movies and every once in a while there'll be a Funko Pop photography contest where there's a theme like musicians or sports I'm like I don't have anything for that but now I do but now as is the way with every Funko Pop unboxing video we are going to do the true test of value because it doesn't matter that I love it what Funko collectors want to know is how much is this worth on the market so I'm just going to give you what you want okay so to start we're going to see how much these two boxes actually cost is it in bad taste for me to look up how much my mom spent on my birthday presents probably but here we are now uh, a key dog and fish imperfection section mystery box okay typically it goes for 39.99 so 40 bucks for six pops that's already an amazing deal but like right here right now when I'm recording this video it looks like they're on sale for 30 bucks each so if you watch this video and the timing is right, you could grab one of these boxes for yourself at an incredible deal. But we're going to go with the price that I think my mom paid, which was essentially $40 per box. So like 80 bucks plus tax. And since it would have been over $50, she probably didn't have to pay for shipping because K-Dog and Fish are awesome like that. So yeah, let's say like 80 plus Canadian, 13% HST. Let's say like $90, okay? So let's say that $90 is the price point that we have to beat for all 12 of these pops on the pop price guide. Can we do it? I'm almost positive we can, but let's find out. All right, in no specific order, here we go. First off, Transformer Captain Marvel, currently trending at $11. Bram Stoker's Dracula Vlad the Impaler, currently trending at $19. Brett Michaels from Brett Michaels, currently trending at $17. Bill from Office Space, currently trending at $20. DMC from Run DMC, currently trending at $15. Cowboy McNugget from McDonald's, currently trending at $18. Okay, pause before we go on. That is six pops. That is one mystery box. We're already at a hundred bucks. <laughs> oh, there's nowhere to go but up. Okay, let's keep going. Gar Saxon from Star Wars, $18. Young Gru from Minions Rise of Gru, $10. Wonder Woman from DC Comics, $17. Goldberg from The Mighty Ducks, $19. Mrs. White with Wrench from Clue, $14. Okay, and the Holy Grail between these two boxes. Ultimate Princess Ariel, currently trending at $38. 
for a grand total of 216 dollars. Uh, just the big takeaway here, everyone, is that we love K-Dog and Fish. And that we love my mom because she got me an amazing birthday present. Um, oh, actually, nothing to do with K-Dog and Fish, but everything to do with my birthday and Funko's. Just hold on. Ugh. So this is another Funko that I got for my birthday, not from K-Dog and Fish, but since we're celebrating my birthday and Funkos, I thought I'd share it with you right here, right now. So this was a gift from my good friend Luke. He knows I collect Funkos. He knows I love Disney. And I'm actually thoroughly impressed that he was able to get me a Funko I didn't have, but heavily wanted. Mickey Mouse piloting the Jungle Cruise. It is Skipper Mickey in the Jungle Cruise. I was so thrilled to add this to my collection on top of all these amazing figures. <sighs> well, anyway, friends, there you have it. My birthday haul from K-Dog and Fish, plus Skipper Mickey from the Jungle Cruise. Oh, but of course, we cannot forget this mystery Funko that I did not open because I'm going to do that in a future video. So make sure that you stay tuned for that and let me know what you think is in this box. But until then, friends, this concludes yet another episode of Teacup 41. Now let me know in the comments section down below which one of these imperfection section mystery Funkos was your favorite. And let me know, have you followed K-Dog and Fish yet? And if not, why not? Don't answer that, just go follow them. And you know who else you should follow? Me. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and you want to see me do more videos about Disney, Shakespeare, movies, sometimes Funkos, sometimes cats, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And if you haven't subscribed already, it is so easy. All you have to do is click on my face. <laughs> Thanks for joining me again today, everyone. My name is Matt and I have two degrees and that's the tea cup for one. <sighs> go away.